Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the Frontline Changes Report. And uh, so this for the past 24 hours, there's still a lot of things uh, appearing, a lot of frontline changes because uh, Deep State UA did not mention where is the frontline changes. They, said, they just say that the map is updated and that forces me to go through the entire mapping and uh, that allows me to you know uh, clean up a lot of the front line according to their latest mapping and uh, and also the I haven't done a situation report in three days so the situation report will be later on the DPA war channel and uh, so we're gonna start so there is front line changes across almost all the front line so over at Vurvaka, First Chance, Timkovka, Pishane, Sekhievka, Toske, Serbianske Forestry, Bilohorivka, Krajkorivka, Druzba, Novoselivka, Novoselivka, Persia. Uh, yeah, it's two different places. And uh, Krasnohorivka, Novo Mayoske, uh, Vishnevi, Marfopil, Novo Danilivka, Mali Shebaki, and Petikaki. A lot of changes. Uh, some are minor changes, some are very significant ones. So we go into the Khaki front first. So over at Burvaka, the we have this grey zone where the Ukrainians uh, have this as a grey zone. Uh, now they have confirmed that the Russians have firm control over the entire of the northern bank of the Serebiansky forestry. Russian forces have basically firmly taken all of this. Previously, this was drawn as gray zone so they have updated this some time ago or maybe over the past 24 hours i have no idea because usually i just follow where they say that the there are frontline changes uh you know in their post so i don't go through the entire mapping but because they didn't do this do it this time i have to follow through and go through everything so this is the latest update uh so which makes perfect sense um no, this one is uh, basically going to what where the Russians have mapped the front line. The next front line change is over at Voschans, very small one. So <clears throat> just a more firmer control of the the northern side of the Voschans, Voschans city under Russian control. This entire area here, this entire forest area here uh, in the plains and whatnot in the north of Voschan River, this is a grey zone for the Ukrainian mapping. So Ukrainian mapping's grey zone is huge. Uh, this entire half here is all gray zones. These are all gray zones to the Ukrainians. So uh, just you know, just in, t in case you're interested. Then we go all the way to uh, to the Kupians front. So this this is the uh, Khaki front. We move into the uh, Kupians front. So at the Kupians front, uh, there is frontline change over Tinkovka. According to the Ukrainian mapping, this this area here, Timkovka has firm, previously has been taken over by the Russian forces, but somehow in their mapping, uh, in the latest mapping, they have claimed control back over the entire region. So maybe sometime somehow the Russian forces may have abandoned the position, and the Ukrainians are back. That could be a high possibility. We have this report from the from Ryber and Russian Defense Ministry of the capture of Timkovka on the 11th of June. So that was ar around more than a month ago. Uh, but the the Russians may not stay here because this area here may not be very conducive. Perhaps I'm not sure in terms of holding positions. So maybe that's why they, they left it. Whatever it is, this is now a gray zone on our mapping. The Ukrainian and the Russian mapping is now um, overlapping. In case you do not know, for those that are new to this channel or you may not be aware, the blue mapping and the pink mapping is two maps. It's not. This is not one map. This is actually two different maps overlaying on each other. The blue is the Ukrainian Ukrainian map. The red or the pink is the Russian map. So there, so the there is some difference in terms of the reality of the front line. So this is why we have two maps overlaying on each other, and that is how you see, um, the difference in terms of the perspective. Which is sometimes you may see why maybe certain you, the Ukrainian side are thinking that they are much better. Uh, you can actually see on the map, but no, the Russians will think that they are much better, and this will be on the map. And also. Uh, the map will also change. Both maps will change if there is geolocation or very firm uh, uh, no giving up of territory. Like for example, Deep State UA uh, reports about the Russians capturing certain grounds. Uh, then that will also affect the Russian mapping because they, if the site considered that they have lost the ground, most likely they are correct. So they most likely that will be accurate. So then we come to Pishani. And now this is as exactly what I mentioned. Deep State US mapping have claimed that the Russian forces have captured Pishani 
Oh no, sorry, have entered Pishani. So there is this massive, massive front line change over in this region here. Oh, uh, can I? Mm, yeah. So, okay, whatever. So uh, then the Russian forces basically have advanced and conquered all of this area, including most of the southern part of Bishane. Ukrainian forces still holds the western and the northern part, the, which means that the, 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 the fighting has now entered Bishani and the battle has begun. The battle of, of Pishani has begun. We This came as a very sudden change, uh, in my opinion. It was not mentioned on the Ukrainian or the Russian side. It was simply drawn into the map by Deep State UA and it was not mentioned in any post. So it was a pretty surprising uh, uh, change, in my opinion. Uh, so Russian forces basically have taken everything, all, all the entire eastern outskirt and the southern part and they have taken the southern, south, almost the entire of the southern half. So we shall continue to monitor the battle of Pishan, Pishani. And a very, very uh, big change. This is a very significant thing because after Pishani, they go all the way westward. It's going to hit uh, Kolishnikivka. Uh, and then they can actually swing down to Kriyalikivka and actually you know, conquer the crossing. And that will totally hamper the entire, you know, uh, uh, logistic of the Ukrainian side. After Pishani, uh, we have the next frontline change is over at Serhievka. So in this area here, this is a Ukrainian claim. Ukrainian, uh, according to Ukrainian mapping, they claim the entire forest region here over this area. Uh, this this forest here, they have claimed this entire forest, which makes their position a lot more advantageous. Um, and I put the Russians a bit more pressure. Uh, over in the Sahievka region. If the Russians have this forest, the re Russian position will be better. So currently, this makes the Russian position a bit more difficult, tactically speaking. So uh, so this is just a claim. So there is a, no disparity in terms of the, the mappings. So after Sahievka, we go to Toske. So there's some slight changes at, uh, at the front line at Toske. According to the Ukrainian mapping, you can see if I zoom in, uh, this road dirt road and some forest region is now uh under russian control according to the ukrainian mapping they have captured this area here everything around this confirmed area are all gray zones which means that ukrainians are actually not there but the russians are also not there so but the last uh site that takes the ground or holds the ground is the ukrainians so it's definitely in in blue so this this is just off toske and uh, this is Dibrova around here. This Toske Liman is over there. Crimea is over there. So, so uh, the next frontline change after Toske is is going to be in the Serebransky Forest Tree. Accor according to the Ukrainian mapping, they have claimed uh, this area here. I actually put this in the wrong color. This should be in the orange. Yeah, yellow. So the Ukrainian forces have claimed to have uh, straightened the front line and captured a lot of the trenches and this is highly plausible because there is there is a uh, multiple video footage of the azov battalion or now brigade azov brigade capturing um, and uh, taking out certain trenches in the forest and uh, some very brutal images coming out where the russian soldiers were soldier was just you no know, gunned down in cold blood but of course you no know, the yeah it is war days what it is so the uh, so that this frontline change is likely to be pos uh like is likely to be actually correct, uh, but it will be still uh, overlapping mapping because uh there is no uh geo locations to confirm this uh, frontline change unless the Russians actually consider consider it. Uh, south of this position over at Khoikhorivka, uh the the Ukrainians have disclaimed a very slight difference uh this area here. So the Russians have actually you no know, taken a bit more of this forest along the river regions, this this min 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 meandering river region. So uh, so the Ukrainian positions are a bit uh more uh southern a bit just a little bit, but this is a very complicated this area because it's entirely forest and you know, full of rivers and the water swarms lakes very complicated region so uh, i don't think we need to worry too much about the actual you no know, front line around here is because it wouldn't matter a lot for now because it's the entire piece is just forest um and then the next front line change is south at south of bilohorivka Ukraine, uh, previously we have geolocation of russian forces and attacking in this area here and uh, there was always this possibility that the Russians may have continued continue to attack 
and encircle this uh, chalk quarry. Unfortunately for the Russians, uh, for the pro-Russian side, uh, this did not happen. Ukrainians uh, mapping reclaimed this entire area. So tentatively, this is going to be overlapping mapping because this is just a Ukrainian claim against a previous geolocation. So, uh, and the next frontline change is going to be over at, let me see, Druzba. So, uh, Druzba is over at the New York front. So this New York, Torets, uh, Holivka, further south in that direction is the Donetsk city. So if I zoom out, you probably can see. Um, so there is uh, over at Druzba, Pivnishne region, Russian forces geolocated in three different locations, confirming the Russians have expanded their control around this Druzba and Pivnishne region along the railway line. So this frontline change, uh, if I zoom out a bit, you can see the Russian forces have basically, you know, continued their offensive actions around this area along the railway line. And I believe they will continue to follow through with the railway line and expand their control around here. And, uh, and this, even this movement will be able to, you know, uh, force some Ukrainian redrawal around, along this area because they, you do not know when you'll get encircled. So this this punch through will probably still do a lot for the Russian uh, in the tactical sense. So the next front line change is nearby of, uh, no, this this is a previous front line. So let's click the update. The next front line is over at Nova Selivka, over at the New York front. Uh, so Nova Selivka, you can see this column, the heading all the way up towards New York. Uh, the Russians, as I mentioned before, continue to expand their uh, their buttress, the, the, their base area of this column, and uh, they managed to capture a lot of grounds uh, in the northwestern part of Nova Selivka. This is based on Ukrainian mapping, so this is confirmed uh, as they continue to progress towards the eastern part of Oleksandropil. So, Russians are making good advance. I believe they're going to control at least this entire area for sure. Uh, the next the next push is likely to for them to control this entire area. I don't think the Ukrainians can stop them around here. I think the Ukrainians will hold their uh, their stand over along the settlement regions. So anyway, the Russians are going to definitely continue to push through. So this is a uh, frontline change over at Nova Selivka. The next frontline change is over at no Nova Selivka, Persia. Um, so this is uh, over at the DFK front in the southern part of Nova Selivka, Persia and north of Umanske, which is over here. Uh, you, Russian forces, after our previous front line changes, is like this. The Russian forces uh, have uh, straightened the front line a little bit. So just this is just a very small, tiny change. It doesn't really change anything in the tactical sense. The next front line change after Nova Selivka, Persia is at Krasnohorivka. So uh, over at the bed of Krasnohorivka in the Donetsk front, so in, I zoom out a bit, Donetsk city, Adyevka front is over here. So this is, we're now at the Krasnohorivka. At Krasnohorivka, uh, latest mapping have suggested that the Ukrainians have given up this entire uh, western part of the city. They have confirmed that the Russians have firm control over the entire of this western part and all of this industrial area. So this uh, is uh, purely logical. Uh, clearly the Ukrainians will not be able to hold a position like this. Nowhere, they have nowhere to run but a one mass, ma one massive field across you know, almost a kilometer. There was just, that's just going to be a death trap. You no know? you know, turkey shoot for the, any snipers. So so this is the, the situation around at Krasnohorivka as the Russians continue to expand their control. So the next frontline change is over at now Novo uh, Mayoske, continuing at the Adyevka front. Krasnohorivka is here. So now we move here. So over at Nav uh, Novo Mayoske, there is some updates in terms of the Ukrainian perception of the front line around here. That doesn't necessarily mean that the Russians have attacked, but we do not know. But the Russian forces basically have firmly taken control of the river along Novo Mayoske. So this entire area here now is not under Russian control. So this will provide a very good defensive position for the Russians to push on if they choose to uh, over at Novo, Novo Mayoske. So just some slight change. So uh, this is a capture. And then the next frontline change after Novo Mayoske is at Vishineve. Uh, 
so mute my whatsapp so over at Vishnevi, uh there is a ukrainian claim so uh our, now we're mapping russian uh so let me let me show you where are we uh this is at the huyai pole sector this is the this is the sector so over the Vishnevi region uh our mapping looks the our previous ukrainian mapping looks like this probably due to a prob previous geolocation of russian forces uh, which is why the mapping suddenly looked in such a weird angle but the ukrainian mapping still continues to show their their front line front line look like this so so i decided so of course we will follow because the previous year location was so long ago i probably can't even remember now not probably i definitely don't remember now so uh the ukrainian positions is now much more closer to the russian held uh, vishnevi so this is the front line change around here over at the huyai pole sector and the next frontline change is over at Mafopil. Similar situation, uh, except that this is on the reverse, uh, just off uh, Huyai Pole. Uh, Russian forces have control, taken uh, control of this entire area here. Uh, this basically aligns the Ukrainian mapping with the Russian mapping. So the Russian forces have uh, more or less you no know, control better positions or firmly control the entire uh, southwestern part of Mafopil. So the western part entirely is still not, is still under Ukrainian control. So we shall wait and see how this develops. Uh, definitely, I don't think this is a very active front line. The next front line change is over at Novo Danilevka, over at the Orkiv sector, where the Ukrainian 2023 20, uh, counter offensive was previously operated on. Um, north of Kopani, there is just slight change of that this junction of forest is now taken by the Russian forces. So it's a small, small change. Uh, but technically, of course, it's significant. And uh, there is, of course, reports of fighting in the area near Novo Danilevka for uh, on the 6th and then on the 13th. So it could be maybe related a little bit to this in the direction towards Novo Danilevka. So, so this is just one small little change. And... Uh, the next frontline change is over at Mali Shabaki. So just nearby, uh, over at the Kayamske sector, the at the Kayamske sector, the Ukrainian mapping have uh considered the entire tree line around here. So the Russian forces have taken better control uh, of this area here. The previous fighting reported here was on the 20th of June. So maybe this could be related to the fighting you no know, a month ago, or it could be on the 8th of of july uh reported about the fighting near shibaki so it could be the case so it could be recent and uh the next front line change is over at uh petikaki so uh just so we have fighting being reported at petikaki on the 11, 6 11 and the 14 in the latest 14th around two days ago so the russian forces have uh conquered the entire tree line uh in this area here as they now face the uh some sort, some sort of like a river system around here or oh, is it a valley let me, let me see the relief mapping uh yeah it's almost like a low ground you know some kind of low ground region here it looks very riverish to me so so the russian forces have uh, some slight change around this area here uh, tentatively there's still no indication that the uh, russians are going to do a serious offensive to capture these three settlements of tepove lokove and patikaki uh it could be taken in one single day so uh but the russians are not pushing through so that's about it so these are all the frontline changes report uh, a lot of frontline change a lot of minor changes because of uh, uh we try to you know update it according to the latest ukrainian mapping uh, because if, if otherwise i usually don't go through the entire mapping because it's very time consuming uh but the most significant i believe is the pishani one i think this is one of the more the most uh strategically and tactically uh significant frontline change where the russians have basically entered the settlement uh in a massive uh, offensive action that was being reported already uh the uh the the fighting was reported on the 14 and the 15 so this could be the one of the, the latest you no know, developments of the front line around this area here so anyway thank you for watching do press the like button subscribe check uh do do subscribe over at dpa war channel to look out for the situation report the sit wrap 
all the summary uh, for the past three days. I'll see you guys in the next update.